So tell another two people, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Thank you, Pastor Ruth. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then you may take your seat. Praise God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Are you glad to be in church? Yes. Amen. Well, uh, I have a wonderful testimony to share with you. And uh, Brian is here. And uh, where is Brian Mabasa? So he, he, come stand here. So you can testify what pastor is saying is the truth. Uh, I met with Brian's fiance on, on Friday that she came down to Durban and I met her briefly and then she said to me, she said, Pastor, I have a testimony to share with you. This was on Friday. I said, please share with me. So um, she said, well, what had happened was I had given my book, The Language of the New Man, to Raven Kin. Some time back, when we had published it, I went up to Johannesburg and I gave him a copy of my book. And uh, so, you are just to confirm what I'm saying is the truth, right? So, when he was packing to go to the U.S., uh, the Lord spoke to him. As he was packing, the Lord spoke to him and said, pack Pastor Singh's book with your things. So, he took my book, The Language of the New Man, and packed it in his case. Then he went to America and then, you know, they were busy working and all of that. And so one day, he was cleaning the flat. He said, well, I'll clean the flat and then I'll start to pray. And uh, as he was cleaning the flat, the Lord spoke to him and said, pick up the book. Uh, pick up Pastor Singh's book, The Language of the New Man. So as he picked it up, the Lord said to him, I really want to bless you today. So he said, start flipping through the pages of the book. So he flipped through the pages of the book. And in the book, he found a brand new $10,000 bill. Oh. That's true, bro. So, you know, you, you know they, have a, they have one dollar, I mean, one bill that's 10,000, like how we have a 200 rand note, they have a 10,000 dollar one bill. He found a brand new bill in the book. Now that book, no one had access to it, he had not lent it to nobody, he had not taken to church, so it was just in his possession. But God said to him, I'm going to bless you today, and gave him a creative miracle in my book. So, so, um, Brian's fiance said, now pastor, when they shared with, with that with the whole church in Randburg, everybody's looking for your book. <laughs> it wasn't that wonderful? God does these things. God does these things. Please sit down. Is that right, Brian? Yes, pastor. So, I kind of did it quickly because, I, uh, because of time. Thanks, Brian. But uh, Brian could have maybe said it just the way I said it or even better, but the issue is that I wanted him to confirm. This was on Friday. And I was saying uh, that the church, especially our church, when I'm saying our church, I mean in the South African context, has not yet caught the reality of Christ. They have not caught a revelation in their heart. It has not been illuminated in their spirit who Christ is and what he can do. It has not dawned upon them yet. When we preach and we teach, they say, Amen, 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 Pastor. But really is a light being switched on. And the reason why sometimes they miss it is because religion has so damaged everybody. Over the years, sitting in different churches, people have put layers and layers upon religion. Religion, nice sounding things, things that sound nice. Sounds nice to the human intellect, sounds nice to the ears, sounds nice to your spirit man. Put them fast asleep. Now we are awakening the church with spiritual truth. That means we are preaching the gospel, undiluted. 
the living word of God. We are giving it to you every week. Sometimes it's challenging, but change, <laughs> there's no change without a challenge. And sometimes you have to strip off your old thinking. You have to strip off religion. You have to strip off what your interpretation is of the gospel. Because over the years, some people say, well, I've been in church since I'm 10 years old. I've been in church since I'm 15 years old. But by and by, sitting there and getting religious um, you know, teaching has damaged us. So we have to come to a point in our lives where we will say, Lord, I want you and I want your word by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's what we want. That's what we want creative miracles in our day to day lives. We want to see signs and wonders and miracles. We want to testify the glory of God. We want not to hear nice things, but we want to see things. It's good to hear about nice things. Then there's another issue I'd like to address with you before I share the word of God with you. It's like God is going to make a way out for you. God is going to bless you. That is not true. He has already blessed you. He has already blessed you. Well, God is going to heal you. He's already healed you. For by his stripes, ye were healed. In the past tense, take note of the tenses. What Christ has done for you already. He has healed you. So when you say, but pastor, I'm sick, I need healing. Well, understand first, that must be a revelation to you. Christ has healed you. Once you have a revelation of that, Christ has healed me. <laughs> then you walk out the sickness Hallelujah. into healing. That's all it is. If you are sitting in a poverty-stricken state and you are suffering, your suffering is for nothing because the Bible tells us Christ became poor so that we may become rich. So what do you do? Do you pray for relief? No, sir. You have to decide once and for all. This is what Christ has done for me. Then you walk out of your poverty. You walk out of your suffering. You walk out of your lack into the abundance of God. You just walk out. That's why it's so important for you to get the word. A steady diet of the word of God. It must be a flow into a human spirit. Spiritual word that will change you. Transform you from the inside to the outside. You understand? And then you get your mind to agree with that. You renew your mind with the word of God. Your spirit becomes full. Then you become a bubbling fountain for Jesus. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, you know, God had given us something. Let, let me share this with you. Not everybody understands that. They say, well, pastor, praise the Lord. That's pastor, praise God. That's pastor. It's pastor preaching. It's pastor praying to the sick. Hey, it's more than that. When are you going to get a hold of that revelation? When? The sooner you get it, the better for you. Because there's something in Ephesians. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6. I'll share with you something so powerful in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 6. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. See what he says here in Ephesians chapter 4. It says, one God and Father of all. One God, Father of all. And then he says, who is above all? <laughs> Are you listening to me? He's above sickness. He's above disease. He's above financial lack. He's above situations that is trying to drown you. He's above mediocrity. Yes. There's one God and Father of all who's above all and through all and in you all. But watch this. He says, but to unto every man. 
or to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And watch this, don't lose this one. And then the Bible says, and he gave gifts unto men. What is the gift the scripture is talking about? That he gave gifts unto men. Is it talking about spiritual gifts? No. It's not talking about spiritual gifts. He deals with that elsewhere. But watch. Let's read on. It says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended, first in the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended, up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Now that's the gifts he's talking about here. We find it in verse number 11. He says, And he gave what? Some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of, of the Son of God unto a perfect man. So what will make you a perfect man in Christ? Knowledge. See that? Unto the measure, the stature, and the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, it says, That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. <laughs> one day I'm up, one day I'm down. One day I want to go to church. One day I don't want to go to church. One day I'm excited. Jesus is Lord. Then the next day, <laughs> mm, um, I don't really think I want to go to church. <laughs> Children. I'm upset. Children. Think about how spiritual we think we are. But uh, it's like in a relationship, you know, you're married with your wife. And when issues rise up, you don't say, pack your bag, go home, go, go to Papa's house now. Think about that. You fight, you scratch each other's ears. You pull each other's noses. You cry, you shout, you jump, you dance. But the next day, hi, honey. Ooh. But spiritually speaking, when you have an issue, you look for a door out. I want to run. I'm not happy. I want to sit down. I want to go. You are children. Nepios. Nepios. Not strong in spirit. Not strong in mind. Have no resolute conviction to the gospel. In other words, it does not matter. I, I know in whom I believe. I know in what I believe. I cannot be moved. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? You have to get to that point in your life. And so you find people running because they challenge. And they run, they run, they run, they run, they run everywhere. They're running in confusion. They're lost. They are children. Tossed to and fro. Tossed to and fro. God doesn't want you be, to be like that. He wants you to be strong in the faith. And your strength is only displayed when it's tested, really. It's in the day of adversity. How would you respond? How would you act? See? Now watch this. So he says, uh, That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's why, as a child of God, I say to you that you have an inside infrared, you know, GPS. You, you have something. It's the Holy Ghost. When someone is speaking to you, because he says, I'm a Christian, don't believe everything he says. He may even say, I'm a pastor. Then you think, wow, pastor, anything you say. Oh, okay. Listen, you need to test the spirit. See, see what's coming out. 
The Holy Ghost must identify with you. It must bear witness that the man is speaking out of a clean spirit. I bear witness because my spirit bears witness. I'm not moved just by words. I'm testing what is the spirit that's coming out of the man. Is it Christ? Is it Christ crucified? It is the word of God. Is it born out of love? Is, is, is it got the fruit of the Spirit? It is for the goodness of the church. Is it for the building, edification, exaltation of the saints? What is that Spirit? So you've got to be deeper in the Word and deeper in the things of God to identify, to say, well, now I have my, my radar on, the Holy Ghost that's on. And brother, you can speak, but while you're speaking, understand there is something that's checking you out. <laughs> It's like an x-ray machine. And if you detect, if it's not out of the fruit of the Spirit, or for the unification, or for the edification, or for the exaltation of the gospel and the unity of the church, then brother, we're going to mock you. It's coming with division. It's coming with dissension. And it's coming with strife. That is not from God. That's not from the Holy Spirit. That is from your own human carnal reasoning and from the devil. And we don't partake of that. We are children of God, sons of God. You, you understand? Now, I said all of that to say this here, is that God gave gifts unto men. What are the gifts that he gave unto men? I said to you just now, we're not talking about spiritual gifts. So what is the gifts that he gave unto men? He gave the apostle. <laughs> he gave the prophet. He gave the teacher. He gave the evangelist. He gave the pastor unto men. So men say, I love God. I won't acknowledge the man. There's your first mistake. There is your first mistake. I love Christ. Oh, I like to pray to Christ, but uh, the gift that God gave me in the form of men, I reject. First mistake. So you have to come to an understanding, a Bible understanding, that the giftings of God have come before the church in the form of men and women. When I say men, it also includes the feminine agenda. So it's not only males, but it includes male and female. So God has given gifts to men. Now, very interesting. You've got to recognize that. And you've got to understand that's it. There's something these men are carrying. When I say men, I mean men and women, right? So, so just to clarify that, so when I use the men in the singular, but it's actually the plural, it's including both men and women. So when he gave, when God gave gifts to men, those gifts came to the church packaged. <laughs> if you would receive those gifts Christ had given you in, in, in the form of men, in other words, if you, would receive, if you would ever acknowledge it, if you would respect it, if you would submit to its authority, it would flow into your life. So perhaps sometimes many people are not experiencing what they should experience or they're not experiencing what other people are experiencing because they don't know how to acknowledge and they don't know how to receive. So you cannot say my pastor is just a pastor. pastor. No, I'm more than that. I've got something in me. <laughs> I sometimes think, I sometimes think why one gets healed and another doesn't get healed. Some gets healed just like that and some don't. And uh, you can kind of uh, bring it down to their perception. What are their perceptions? So you've got to acknowledge gifts God had given the church. And you've got to be thankful for the gifts God has given the church. Because these are not just men and women that are functioning. Uh, there's something they're carrying. Now, not everybody's carrying a same measure of grace. Understand that. There are different measures of grace given to different people. 
And that too is not determined by how big a church you have. <laughs> because some men don't have churches at all, but they are evangelists, but they're carrying a measure of grace. And you see that measure of grace operating. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Very interesting scripture. I want to point out something else to you. I'm just kind of lay, laying a foundation for you to understand how you can receive. How, what, 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 how do I align myself to receive from the Word of God? So number one, you have to acknowledge God gave gifts in the form of men to the body of Christ. And it's in receiving those men, those gifts, the apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor, then you are, if you receive them correctly, you receive the package. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh boy. N not everybody's going to prosper. Not everybody is, um, is, uh, is going to get healed. Not everybody is going to do well. Why? Because not everybody is perceiving. Not everybody is understanding. With all your getting, get understanding. Then Proverbs tells us, wisdom is the principal thing. So he wants the church to operate in wisdom and understanding. All right, what did I say? Acts chapter 3, verse 6. You found it? Watch, watch what, what has happened here. It says, let's read from, from verse number, number 1. In Acts chapter 3, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And it says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. That means the man was begging. It says, Who seeing Peter and John went about to go into the temple. Now watch. Who, who, who were Peter and John? Who were they? They were what? Uh, apostles. So they were what? According to Ephesians chapter 4, they were gifts given by God. <laughs> Say gifts given by God. So they were gifts. Now watch this. It says, who, who seeing Peter and John went about to go into the temple, asked in arms, and Peter, fastening his eyes on him with John, said, look on us. Oh, boy. I, I, want, you, I want you to give, get, get me a loose chair, and then uh, if someone can run to me with a chair, uh, uh, yeah. Come, come, sit here uh, and turn it around. I understand. Here's Peter and John that walk. These were gifts. According to Ephesians, the scripture that I shared with you. So these were not just Peter and John now. They were, yes, Peter and John, but they were what? More than Peter and John. They were gifts. Oh, you've got to catch this. They were gifts. Given by Christ to the church. Given by Christ to the world. These were gifts. So Peter and John coming. See what he says here. He says, uh, Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. He didn't say pray. <laughs> he didn't say fast. What did he say? He says, look. Look, what was he supposed to look at? He was supposed to look at God's gift. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's why when you're touching material, books and tapes, you are not touching. Now, so, some of them are ordinary, not all of them. You hear what I said? I said some of them are ordinary. Not all of them are ordinary because it depends who's written them, who's produced them. Uh, when, you, when you are dealing with Pastor Chris's material, they are not ordinary. They are anointed. 
with that material came anointing. When you are dealing with my material, they are not ordinary. <laughs> they, are, they, they have come to you with an anointing. It's not just a book with information. It's a miracle producing product. Capable of changing you. Capable of supplying your every need. So he said, look on us, watch. He said, look on us. And uh, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now that's another subject matter. We'll deal with that some other time. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such, now watch, this very important. He says, well, he's talking to the man. He says, look on me. Then he says, now, such as I have, I give to thee. He didn't say, I'm going to go and pray to God now. I'm going to go to the temple. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to get something from God. Then I'll bring it back to you and I'll give it to you. He didn't say that. He didn't say, uh, dear Lord Jesus, I pray heal this man. He didn't say that. He said, look on us. Then the man looked. Then he said something very profound. He says, such as I have. I can't give him something I don't have. That means such as I have, I have something. Now this something that you want, I got, I can give to you. Now it's not a question of whether I want to give it to you. I want to give it. Can you receive it? That's the question. Can you receive it? If you want a financial miracle, and you want the anointing of prosperity function in your life, I can give it to you. Can you receive it? There's an anointing on me to heal. I can heal you. Can you receive it? It's not out of pity. It's not out of compassion. Although that, those are, are, are things that, that do play. I mean, you know, you've got to minister to the sick with compassion. Jesus had compassion. It's true. But it is out of you understanding. Hallelujah. Pastors carrying something. Yeah. It's called the anointing of God. It's called the Holy Ghost with fire. He's carrying something. So in a church service like this, I make a demand. Yeah. How do I make a demand? I believe those words. I tap into it. I open my spirit. I open my heart. I open my understanding. I say, Lord Jesus, this is not an ordinary service. The man of God has come to preach. The man of God has come to give me, deliver something. I want to get a hold. My marriage is in that thing. My ministry is in this thing. My business is hitched to this thing. I don't care what sickness you have. If you're sitting here, if you understand what I'm saying, you will walk out of here. <laughs> Some of you have, God's given you visions. And God has given you words of what, how he's going to use you and what he will do. It's wrapped up how you will receive. What? So he said, he said, uh, but Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I give thee. It, watch, 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 watch. Please, church, watch. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give. What did he have? Giftings. The healing was on the prophet. The healing was, the anointing of healing was on the man. Yes. You're waiting for a feeling. <laughs> Don't wait for a feeling. It's not a feeling. <laughs> you, you understand? Now watch this. Watch, watch. It says, uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, such as I have, such as I have, I give you. <laughs> Now watch what he said. He says, watch, watch. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Watch. It's in your Bible. Please read your Bible. He says, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now watch. You, your man sitting in a wheelchair. You say, uh, uh, you ready to walk? Uh, no. He's crippled himself. 
He says, now watch. He says, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Then he took him by the right hand. And he, watch, watch, watch. He took, uh, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Now watch, watch, watch. Then the Bible says, and straight away his ankle bones received strength. <laughs> and as he lifted him out, he leapt and walked and ran and jumped and praised God. Where was the gift? I said, where was the gift? <laughs> so it's not pastor it's more than pastor it's your understanding and your perception that has that has crippled your faith that has bound you from receiving all that needs to be received you, you understand what I'm saying now please sit down if you will take that out if you will understand what I just shared with you you cannot be sick. You cannot be suffering. If you will understand. You will say in your heart and mind, if pastor just gives me a word. I said to you so many times, so many of you, I said, go and start something. You did not believe those words. You were just full of fear, doubt, and unbelief. So you went away and said, pastor, it's not possible. With those words came an anointing. It, there was power. There was virtue. Such as I, listen, such as I have, I gave you the word. But the Bible says that they did not receive, they did not mix the word that they received with faith. <laughs> so when you receive a word, it comes with power. And it comes with anointing, comes with life-changing anointing. That means if I give you a word in your ministry, if I give you a word in your life, if I give you a word in your business, if I give you a word in your finances, if I give you a word in whatever you're doing, if I give you a word, if you will receive it, boy, it will produce, oh, will produce results for you. You, you understand? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's simple. It's simple. Watch. watch. Come, come here, Pastor Johannes. Just stand there. Stand there. Watch. It's simple. I'll give him one word. Watch. I'll give him one word. Just one word. Four. Just one word. One word. Come here, sister. Come here. Stand here. Stand there. Watch. I'll give her one word. Anointing. One word. It came with power. So that is the kind of power that we speak with. Why? God has put giftings in us to transmit to you, to make you prosperous, to make you well, to make you succeed in life, to make you reign in life as kings. Hallelujah. But you see, why some don't receive it? They cannot understand. In all your understanding, <laughs> Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. What is wisdom? Understanding how things of God operate. It's a higher thing, you know. Are, are you with me? Now, I just gave one word to this man. I didn't push him. I didn't pray for him. I, didn't, I just said, fall. In the name of Jesus, he went down. What was that? It was a word with power. When I say healed, you should jump and run. I mean, some people get healed. They don't even know they got healed. I have to test them and say, oh, you got healed. Okay, yes, pastor, pain's gone. It's so programmed like that. So programmed with pain. But the pain has left you. You don't even know the pain's left you. If I look at you this morning, I'm telling you, if you are sick this morning, you are healed now. You are healed now. So you say to me, Pastor, but uh, you didn't lay hands. No, I said you are healed now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, sit down a minute. Now I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Time is going. Time is going. Did you catch something? You caught it, right? You got a hold of it. You are excited now. Now you know how to receive. Hallelujah. You're gone wiser. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I'm gone wiser. Uh -huh. You're getting more proficient in the things of God. Getting sharper. All right, turn to Isaiah. I don't know if I can uh, deal with this fully now, but let's try. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse number. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So next time pastor gives you a word, run with it. <laughs> Just take it and run. Don't say why, what. Can it happen? Is it possible? You have just spoken death over that thing. You just grab a hold of it and run. Because we are not ordinary men. Oh. We are not ordinary men. We are from an anointed class. That means I'm clothed with God's spirit. There's an anointing on us. An anoint See, your prosperity is in my mouth. Your healing is in my mouth. Amen. Your promotion is in my mouth. Amen. Your future is in my mouth. Amen. Not because of Pastor Rashan. It's because Christ gave him as a gift. If you will acknowledge it and receive it, it will produce results for you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, turn to Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Oh, this is powerful now. The Bible says, arise. <laughs> arise, arise. Arise in your understanding. Shine. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. The Gentiles shall come to thy light. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Watch, it's a prophetic word. Hmm. It says, lift up thine eyes round about. And see all they that gather themselves together. They come to thee. <laughs> thy son shall come from afar. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea. That shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Did you, did you hear what I said? Don't miss me now. I said the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Or watch verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. <laughs> and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Now watch this. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to the windows? Surely the isle shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far. Now not, not only the sons would come, but watch. Their silver and their gold will come with them. Unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Now watch this. Therefore thy, thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom 
that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. <laughs> thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. <laughs> Woo! All the stuff they've been storing up is coming to you. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes, now let me explain a few terminologies here. That, that word arise. The Bible says arise, arise. Tell your neighbor arise. arise. That's what God is saying to you this morning. That's my message to you. Arise. What must you arise? Arise from your lack. Arise from poverty. Arise from loneliness. Arise from despair. Arise from mediocrity. Arise from not having enough. Arise! That's what God is saying to the church this morning. Arise! You say you don't have enough on your cell group? Arise! You say you don't have enough on the church? Arise! You say you don't have enough on the bank? Arise! Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, arise, 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 arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me explain what arise means. <laughs> arise in, in, in the Hebrew language, arise is the word kum. Now it means this, kum means abide, accomplish, be clearer, confirm, continue, decree, endorse, enjoin, get up, make good, lift up, again, ordain, pitch and rise. That's a Hebrew word. Come, arise. So you go home today. You speak to your home. Arise. <laughs> you, you have unsafe ones in your family. You say arise. They don't have to hear you. But you walk in home and say arise. You say, you say to lack and you say to problems and circumstances. Arise. In the name of the Lord. Arise. You understand? You say, well, pastor, I'm searching for a job. I'm looking for a job. No, brothers and sisters, the job is there. Say, arise. That's what you do. You prophetically say, arise. You say, I'm looking for more contracts in my business. Great. Say, arise. Hallelujah. The prophecy is in your mouth. The believing is in your heart. The declaration is in your tongue. Talk to the circumstance. Talk to your home. Talk to your business. Talk to the contracts. Talk to the people. They are coming from everywhere. From the east, the west, the north, and the south. Say arise. Give your neighbor a high five and say arise. Say I see you arising. Hey. Business arise. Promotion arise. Health arise. You say, I'm sick this morning. Who told you you are sick? Who told you you are sick? Who told you you are poor? Say, I'm not poor. Say, I'm not sick. Say, I refuse to be sick. Who told you? Who told you? Sick? <laughs> no, sir. Say, I'm not sick. The word of God says, arise. Arise. <laughs> Woo, arise, arise. What do you mean? Depressed. How can you be depressed? You understand? No, arise. Okay, watch this. Sit down a minute. It says, shine. <laughs> arise, shine. Shine. Say, shine. The, 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 the Hebrew word, uh, for, for, for arise is ore. It means, it means to, to, to make luminous. 
Now, God is not saying to you, listen, God is not saying to you, I will make you luminous. It says, arise. <laughs> In your arising, you will shine. Oh. <laughs> Did you get that? In your arising, you will shine. In other words, when you arise, you will become luminous. Watch this. You become luminous. You break off day, which is glorious, kindled, set on fire. In other words, the word of God says, set yourself on fire. You say, but my flame is dying off. Well, fan it. Blow it if you have to blow it. But arise. God is waiting for you. You understand? People are waiting for you. Miracles are waiting for you. It says, come on, if you can just speak the right words, I'll manifest through you. If you will believe the right things, I'll manifest through you. Arise. Shine. <laughs> you cannot be down. You cannot be depressed. You cannot be wanting. You lack no good thing. Arise and shine. Watch. Arise, shine. Thy light, thy light, thy light has come. The light has come. You are not in search for light. No, sir. You have the light, which is Jesus. And he's made you the light. Rub yourself. I'm the light. I'm the light. I'm the light. I'm the light. Everywhere I go, I'm the light. I'm the light. I'm the light. You understand? There's light in me, brother. There's no darkness in me. There's no darkness in you. There's a light of God in you. You see, when, 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 when he said, when he said, come, Pastor Molly, you need to stand there. See, when he said, look on us. When Peter, in Acts chapter 3, he, come there, no, no, stand next to her. Stand behind them. See, when he said, look on us, watch. When he said, look on us, look on us, look on us, look on us. What did he say? What was he meaning? Why did he say, look? Why do we say, look in our eyes? Why? Why do we say, look in our eyes? Because there's a light inside of us. There's a little illumination. You may not see it in the natural eye, but in the spiritual, we are... Br you know if Satan looks at you? You know when Satan looks at you? What? You know how he has to go, Satan, when he looks at you? He has to go like this. So he says to Lucy, I can't look there. <laughs> why? She asks, why? They're shining. <laughs> They're shining bright. They're shining bright. There might be devils all around. They are looking here at you, a gathering of saints. What they are doing is, uh, no, I, I can't stand it. It's a blinding light. It's a blinding light that's on you. So the Bible says, arise, arise. See, the word of God says, arise. Thy light is come. And the glory, the glory, the glory, the Hebrew word for glory is kabod. The glory, the weighty, the weight of God's glory. The power of God is on you. Wherever, everywhere you go, you carry the weight of his glory. When you go to your business, the glory of the Lord is there. When you go to your workplace, the glory of the Lord is there. When you lay hands on the sick, the glory of the Lord is there. When you are dealing with a contract, the glory of the Lord is there. Don't be afraid to put your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, this thing is mine. Don't be afraid to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm expanding. I have factory number three, but number two, I'm going to take you over. Number four, I'm taking you over. I'm expanding to the left. I'm expanding to the right. I'm expanding forward. I'm expanding to the rear. The Menshak anointing is on me. You understand? The Bible says, arise. Arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is upon thee. Watch. Arise and shine. For the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen. Arisen. Risen. Hallelujah. Has risen. Has risen. Now let me tell you the word risen. You know what the word risen means? Listen, the glory of the Lord has risen. Maybe I have to stop here. We'll carry on next week. The Hebrew word for risen is zarak. 
it actually means shooting forth beams. <laughs> see, 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 come here, brother Sibo, come here quickly. Run, run, Ushka, run there. See, see, when, 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 when stand behind him, someone run and catch her. See, when I look at him, beams shoot out. See, when I look at her, beams shoot out. What beams? You can see it with your eyes, but in the spirit realm, it's real. It's real. It's the power of God. It's shooting out of you. See, the glory of the Lord has risen. It's, it's not rising from your chair. Zarak means shooting out like beams. What you look at, if it was in darkness, light will come. If it was dark and in confusion, order comes out of that. Wherever your eyes will look, there shall be order and not confusion. You understand? There's something in you. Tell your neighbor, there's something in you. Aha, aha, aha. Say, arise, arise. Aha. Say, arise. Say, I cannot be sick. I cannot be impoverished. No, no. The Bible says, arise. 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 Shine. The light has risen. Now I'm full of the light of God. Everywhere I go, light comes out of me. I look at lack, it changes. <laughs> I look at something that's not pretty, it's ugly, it changes. <laughs> it becomes something beautiful. I look at the unsaved, they are beautiful. They might be marred, but when I look at them, when you look at them, they change. They, they say, I want to serve the God you're serving. Why? The beauty on your face, I want that beauty on me. I'm confused. I can't sleep at night. But I want what you got. So he says, easy. I shoot it to you. <laughs> I shoot it to you. You, you understand? You, you understand? It's easy. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Zarak, arise. It's coming out of me. I said it's coming out of me. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about preaching, preaching without power. When the apostle Paul preached, what did he say? He said, but my gospel was accompanied with great power. That's what he was talking about. Come here, you two. Come here. You two, come run to me. Look, watch. The light of God. Watch, there's something behind you standing. Watch. The beams of light that shoot out of me into them that changes their hearts, changes their situation. The anointing of God. Tell your neighbor, arise. arise. Tell your neighbor, arise. arise. I said, tell your neighbor, arise. arise. Say, arise. arise. Come on, arise. arise. Shine. Arise. Tell your neighbor, shine. Arise. Woo! Whatever you're doing, arise. Whatever job you're busy with, arise. Whatever you're doing, if you have a ministry, arise. You understand? In your preaching, arise. In your teaching, arise. In your prophesying, arise. In your singing, arise. In your playing musical instruments, arise. Your light has shined. Hallelujah. Say, I'm not mediocre. I'm not average. God's put something inside of me. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, I've got something. If something is on me. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Praise the Lord. Come on, shout to the Lord. Oh boy, I got something. I got something. See what Peter says, and look on us, look on us, look on us. Such as I have, I give to thee. See, some people can't give, they don't have anything. We are not from that lot. We know our portion in life. Oh, we are rich. I'm rich. Successful. Anointed. Going somewhere. Not in darkness. Not in confusion. I'm the light of the world. Everywhere I go, 
I shoot beams of light. <laughs> what does the devil do when he looks at you? I, Lucy, I can't stand it. <laughs> These Christians are shining too much. I mean, uh, bring me my sunglasses. That's a light of God. That's a glory of the Lord. The kabod glory of God is resting upon you. Say arise. arise. Say arise. arise. Say I will arise. I will. In my home. In my marriage. In my finances. In my ministry. I will shine forth. I will not apologize. I'm anointed to prosper, to go forth, to shine for Jesus. I'm a shining light. Ah, rub yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a prophetic act. You rub yourself. Prosperity is my portion. Health is my portion. You understand? Hallelujah. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless each one as they leave. I bless them. I bless their home. I bless their workplace. I bless their business. I bless every family, every marriage, every home, in the name of Jesus, as the people of God would go. Lord, let your grace go with them. Let the love of God go with them. Touch them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, anoint them for prosperity, for expansion, in the name of Jesus. Let them expand to the east, the west, the north, and the south. Let them grow in the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let, O oh God, the Mimshak anointing rest heavily on them. In the name of Jesus. I bless them, Lord. Everything their hands touch will prosper. Lord, they will know no sickness, but health shall be their portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And now, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that the grace of the Lord Jesus rest mightily upon them. And everybody said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a great hand.